Don't you wish there was a really easy way that could actually predict where you went in life going forward? I mean, this is really as close as it comes to having a crystal ball in your hands and in your life. And that thing is really your habits and your rituals because those are consistent personal decisions that you make every day to become a certain kind of person. Now, in this video, I thought I would share five less common daily rituals that I've seen to highly predict success in people that I follow or people that I admire. What's up, you guys? Alex Hine. Welcome back to this video. Now, before we jump in, check out the free journaling worksheet below this video. If you are all into rituals, habits, and journaling, make sure you check out the link below, download the free journaling worksheet, and get that free email series because it's going to help you create an epic life. Ritual number one is the habit of trusting your hunches. Now, I told you guys, I'm not going to give you five BS rituals that you've probably heard before. The very first ritual is the ritual of trusting your gut hunches because all of us have had the experience probably of either going out on a date and feeling attracted to the person, but something feeling wrong and still dating them or getting a job that we didn't really like. We knew we were going to hate it in a year and probably quit it or get fired. And yet we took it or meeting someone that you didn't really like that much. And you still ended up becoming friends, hanging out with them, and then you end up talking crap about them, flaking on them, or you just don't want to be around them, and you have a friendship falling out. The funny thing about all of these scenarios I just mentioned is you probably had a gut feeling early on that, yeah, you know, I'm not really feeling it. Something just doesn't feel right. We don't vibe. And yet you didn't trust that feeling. I've noticed that in a lot of really highly successful people, and I mean holistically, personally developed as well as financially successful, there's always an element of both, of the gut hunches, they trust their gut, and they also trust their logical mind. But we often override the gut because it's very subtle. Ritual number two, the habit of 365 reviews. Now, at the beginning of every new year, I'm always kind of laughing, maybe it's just because I'm a jerk, uh, when everybody's making their new year's resolutions. Because it's usually the same people, the same of us, who are making those resolutions, and then by January or February, at best April, they're gone. Now, I think it's great that we all, as a culture, collectively spend one night a week reflecting on what went well, what didn't go well, and what we can improve on going forward in life. But imagine if you just spent five minutes every night doing that, where every night you were just like, you know, these are the five things I really want to have happen this year in my life, or eventually, and... What do I think is stopping me from making that happen? Or what could I do a little bit differently tomorrow to make that happen? That by itself, you're putting yourself in rare air, the category of someone who, rather than once per year, one out of 365 is now 365 out of 365, reviewing the life they wanna build and what they're doing well and maybe where they're falling short. So I think that for the average person, even just a ritual of injecting a five minute nightly review or AM review is something that can really change the direction of your life because now you have 365 chances to change for the better rather than just one. Ritual number three is the ritual of insane focus. Now there's a story circulating online about Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in America and in the world and I later learned that this story is false, but it's a good story nonetheless. So this private pilot was flying Warren Buffett and he asked him, you know, Mr. Buffett, could I ask you for your tips or your method for success? And the story goes that Warren Buffett said, I want you to write down your top 25 life goals and then I want you to get rid of the bottom 20. Just don't focus on the bottom 20 at all. They don't exist. Just look at those key five. And what he's really talking about is this kind of religious focus. Now, even if the story is fake, what I think is that I see this in many, 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 many successful people. And the reason is a very logical one, right? If you want to be the world's best athlete, you're not going to get there without daily training every single day. And if your goal as a high school athlete is, you know, going out, picking up girls, going, hanging out with your friends, playing video games, just relaxing and watching Netflix, by definition, you're sacrificing time that could go towards your training. And if you want to be a world-class violinist, well, you even look at the number of hours violinists play before they are world-class. The average, the middle number was 10,000 hours. There were people up to 13 or 17,000 hours before they were some of the best in the world. 
So how the hell do you invest that kind of time into something where you're being distracted by a hundred other goals? Where every Friday night, instead of honing your craft, you're going out and hitting the bar. Or every Saturday morning, you know, you're on Instagram for three, four hours instead of us going to do whatever it is we claim we want to be the best at. So this habit of religious focus is really a pragmatic one. You only have so many hours in the day. And if I'm spending half of it on Instagram or half of it just doing something not even related to my goal, how is it going to happen? The fourth ritual that I think predicts success is the habit of solitude. You know, I had a mentor of mine tell me that he had a doctor that had trained him. And his doctor told him that whenever you are frustrated with a problem in life, go into the wilderness until you get the answer. And I thought about this quite a lot because there are, you know, the monastic traditions, the hermits and the hermitages throughout the world are the clearest example of the value of solitude passed down for thousands of years. But I think the big thing in this era is that we have so much information we are exposed to. And what it does is it makes it difficult to see what is another person's thoughts or opinion and what are my own. And so if I don't even know what I really want, I don't even know what are my thoughts or what are some thoughts of some influencer I follow online or some celebrity. How am I supposed to know whether I'm on the right track in my life or not? I can't possibly know because if I'm following someone else's metrics for success or someone else's goals altogether, there's no way for me to know at all if I'm even moving in the right direction. So the habit of solitude can just be a two hour afternoon, drinking a cup of coffee, journaling and thinking about your life, or it can actually be a trip alone into solitude where you're sitting there with problems that you want to have solved. But it's underrated in this generation and this time in history. Now, the last ritual is the ritual of self-insight. You know, I was reading this paper, I think it was, from some psychologists. And the psychologists were presenting the findings 50 years ago of what they asked little boys and girls what they wanted to be when they grew up. Now, I think it was the 1950s. And it was hilarious because when you look at the list of what the little boys and girls wanted to be, they said the typical things, doctor, fireman, nurse, train conductor, whatever sounds cool, pilot, right? And then they asked these kids, different generation, in the 2000s, maybe 2010 or so. And they asked the kids, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And extremely depressingly, the kids on the top of their list was they want to be famous and they want to be a celebrity. Now, I think regardless of whether or not we judge this as good or bad, what we're seeing is the influence of social media. What we're seeing is that fame and notoriety is more accessible now to the average person as opposed to throughout history where you had to be a TV or radio celebrity, which was already so difficult to do. But now anyone can turn on a camera and talk. Now, I think the problem is that what this leads us down a road to is what we think will make us happy and fulfilled versus what will really make us happy and fulfilled. Stephen Covey, the author of The Highly Effective Habits, talks about this idea of making sure your ladder is up against the right wall. And he gives the story of this friend that was a physician. And he was sacrificing all this time and working really, really hard and became a super renowned doctor, maybe even a surgeon. And he hadn't seen him for several decades. He assumed things were just going well and he had became the head of the hospital or his department. Sure enough, he goes to this fundraiser for a party one time. And the doctor was there belligerently loud just like yelling, looking really drunk. And he was really confused because this was his old friend that he hadn't recognized and seen in so long. And this guy was just completely disheveled, like a complete disaster and complete mess. And then when he got to talking to him later or to somebody else, the party, they found out that he'd been divorced and there'd been all these scandals and all this unraveling behind the scenes and his substance abuse problems. And what it really made him think of was that this guy went into this field because of power or status or the money or his parents wanted him to, but that kind of inner calling, that inner resonance with the topic was not there with the field. And so the problem was that his ladder was up against the wrong wall. He was climbing and pushing hard to be someone he didn't even really want to be. And so he unraveled internally and then eventually his external life exploded as well. And I think this generation is really in for a lot of that. If they think that fame and social media notoriety is going to be the thing that fills them up, they're going to be sorely disappointed when they get that and they don't feel any different. So make sure your goals are really your own goals. All right, guys, that's all I have for these five lesser known rituals that I think predict success in a very important way. 
Check out the free journaling worksheet, the first link below this video, because you'll also get a journaling series via email on how to design your dream life and how to get your life together. All right, you guys, check it out. And before you go, I have two other videos for you here.